Welcome, everybody, to the Competition Archery Media Podcast, where we explore all things pertaining to competition archery. I'm your host, PJ Riley, and our CAM podcast is brought to you by our fine platinum sponsors, PSE, Trueball Excel, Matthews, Black Eagle, Elite, B3 Archery, and Victory Archery. So today, we got a great guest. We have a guy who just charted his first win as a professional, Jeff Rainey. Jeff, thanks for being here. I'm glad to be here. So, the ASA Classic, your first win as a pro. How does that, we're a couple weeks out from it now. How's that feel? Is it sunk in? Are you done answering all your text messages? <laughs> How's it been? Yeah, it's it's definitely, it's sunk in. I mean, it, uh, at first it was, uh, took a little bit to process. You know, I've worked really hard uh, to get to that point. In archery and uh to finally you know get a win under my belt it felt really good um hard work's definitely paid off you had a pretty good year i mean i was running through down there you came in third at the nfa dakota classic you of mm-hmm. course came in third at the asa in london shot a 899 at vegas i mean what yeah. happened this year it just seems like things were clicking for you um you know <laughs> You know, I've been shooting the way I'm shooting right now. I feel like the last couple of years, um, I think it's just a, a difference of getting used to the pressure of the professional class. Uh, um, you know, and, and you, and you learn, you learn some things about yourself and, you know, your bow and equipment and stuff that helps along the way too. to, you know, I, I tend to pick up steam throughout a season. Um, you know, I don't always feel like I start the best though. I did start off with a shoot off at the Rushmore rumble this year. Right. And, uh, you know, and just kind of, I hit a, you know, my first ASA of the year was didn't go as planned. Um, but after that I got better at every event, you know, throughout the year. Um, you did for, for those who don't know, I, I looked it up and at Foley, the first one, you were 44th Paris eighth, then London, you finished third. That was your first uh, ASA pro podium metropolis mm-hmm. 11th. I mean, still right there. And then of course winning at the classic. Yeah. Metropolis things a little bit. Um, <laughs> I was what I think on the leaderboard in second with five to go. And I had a glance out there and oh, no I let kidding. that get in my head the, the last few targets. And so that was probably the one shoot of the year that, you know, stung the most for me. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, London, so you came in in the fifth position into the shoot down and then finished third. I mean, so clearly the pressure didn't get to you there either. You, you put on the gas. I mean, I guess you had nothing to lose or what, what was your thought process in London in that shoot? You know, um, you know, I attribute probably indoors. Um, you know, I've just gotten better at shooting my bow under pressure. Um, indoors really helps with that. Um, I, I feel like I'm a pretty strong indoor shooter. Yeah. And I've just put myself in as many situations as possible to be under pressure. Um, and I really feel like that's helped me in ASA. You know, my first ASA shoot off was last year, the classic. And, uh, you know, the pressure got to me and I didn't even hit a bonus ring in that shoot down. And is that right? Um, yep. And, uh, from there, you know, I just, I've really worked on, uh, my mental game more than anything. Um, just trying to keep, keep things together under pressure and, you know, focus on the process and one shot at a time. Gotcha. Well, let's dive into that. First off, how long have you been shooting a bow? I've been shooting a bow as a hunter since I was probably five years old. And how old are you now? I'm 30. I just turned 30 in August. 30. Okay. Um, how about competition? when did you start that? Uh, this is the end of my fourth, like four and a half years. So going into five years ish. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Of competing. Yeah. I started kind of late. How about that? And, uh, what do you do for a living? What's, what's full time for you? I'm a subcontract fencer. Um, I actually, a subcontract for my, uh, father-in-law's company. Um, okay. I've been doing that for almost 11 or not subcontracting for 11 years, but I've been doing fencing for almost 11 years. Gotcha. And family. I know you have a wife, Amanda. Yeah. I've, I've got my, uh, you know, my wife and then I, I don't have kids. Um, we don't have them yet. Um, gotcha. my, uh, parents are here. Um, grandparents, um, her parents. So gotcha. We've got a decent amount of family here. So the, so busy, th- these are the stories that I always like for the archers who are out there who, you know, 
because I think most people are probably in your shoes where they have full-time jobs and then archery is on the side. Not everybody is the full-time archer. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure your life is busy. How, how it's, do you, it's, it's very busy. Yeah. How, how do you fit in archery? What's your, what's a typical week look like for you when you're working on ASA? Um, typical week for me, you know, I try to get quality over quantity in, um, you know, I, fencing's a pretty, you know, labor intensive job, um, physically. Yeah. Um, so I don't always have, I, you know, I feel like a complete new man when I get to an event because, you know, I've been working hard at work and, you know, beat up my body a little bit and shooting tired all the time. And then I get to an event, I've had a few days off and, you know, I feel a lot better. Um, okay. so my practice, my practice normally, I honestly shoot better a lot of times in competition than I do in practice. Is that right? Um, and I think that's just due because my body's a little fresh. You know, I'm not as sore and achy, I guess. Um, so you but, go to you a know, tournament I, and that's a vacation for you. <laughs> I don't know about that. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little more mentally taxing, I guess. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I, you know, I probably during ASA season, I try to, I try to get out at least three or four times a week and, you know, shoot and, you know, work on some things if I've got anything going on and, you know, just making sure my equipment's good to go. Um, I I really, my best practice is normally two to three days before an event, um, where I'm just locking everything in and making sure everything's good to go. I'm, I'm happy with the setup and the way it's shooting. Um, and then get out there and do my thing. Yeah. Um, so, um, practicing at home, do you tend, do you shoot the ASA targets? Do you have them or do you shoot bullseyes? What are you shooting at at home? You know, I've, I've owned a couple of them, but I don't shoot much 3d targets. Um, I shoot okay. at spots basically. Gotcha. Um, we have, you know, just, I have a, luckily I'm, I'm very fortunate. We have a very good archery range that I'm a part of, um, here in Wichita. And, okay. uh, which one is gives that? me an opportunity. Do what? Which one is that? Let's give him a shout out. Uh, Wichita Archery. Nice. So it, uh, it, they've got a field range and, you know, and, and a full practice range. And uh, I do most of my practicing there. Now, indoor season, um, we've got a really good indoor range here too, uh, Diamond Archery. And uh, I do most of my indoor practice there. Yeah. I don't, I haven't done, I normally do a lot more indoor practice during 3D season than I did this year. Um, I spend a lot more time outside. Um, I feel like for some people, I think, you know, indoors really helps their outdoor game. I feel like I have to shoot outside to uh-huh. really, um, to do well outside. Now, when you're doing that, when you're doing your practice outside, what, what distance do you typically shoot at? I do a lot of shooting at about, or between 50 and 60 yards. Okay. Um, gotcha. I try to aim at small, you know, yeah, small orange dots, stuff like that. Um, sometimes I'll even draw out. Um, on cardboard, I'll draw out a ASA 10 ring and color in, you know, two twelve rings where they would normally be at. And I'll shoot at that. And that tends to kind of tell me the forgiveness of my setup because I can see where I'm aiming and kind of see where my misses are and gives me a better idea of if something needs to change. See, that's what we like to hear because everybody always says you got to have the ASA targets. But here, classic champ. You're not practicing on the ASA targets. You're drawing them on cardboard. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, it, yeah, it uh, you don't, you know, for known archery, you know, I don't think you have to have them. Um, now you, you do need to get acquainted with the targets and understand, right. you know, where the twelves are and kind of, you know, I think that's why, you know, you see the scores go up throughout the season. You know, guys are starting to see the targets more who don't shoot them all the time. Right. Um, so it's easier, you know, you're looking through the scope it's a little different than obviously with the naked eye or with your binos. Um, so you get a little better idea of where to put your pin on the target. Yeah. So what's your you're more comfortable with it? What's your scope setup, And are you able to see rings most of the time? Uh, you know, I can't see anything, you know, I can't see rings past, you know, if the lighting conditions were perfect, yeah. I can probably see rings out to 45 ish yards. Okay. Um, I can see, Sometimes I can see 10 rings out to 50, um, core lines, you know, a little detail on the body, but I can't see 12 rings at that distance. Um, I have really good vision, but I run a six X lens on a shrewd optum. Okay. Gotcha. Um, with a blue fiber and a 15 thousandths pin, um, which I just switched to for the classic. I was running a green fiber. Um, that was a 19, um, previously. 
Yeah. And then I switched for the classic. I made a change there. Did that help? Do you think, uh, was that a change oh, you like? 100%. Um, okay. I could, you know, my pen was a little more crispy and blue. Um, don't know why that is. I think it's just an eye thing. Yeah. Um, and going a little smaller, I could see more around, um, the areas I was aiming at, which, you know, helped me locate where to shoot better. Um, whereas before my green fiber was blowing up quite a bit and covering a lot of detail. Gotcha. Right. So you're, you, when you're out there, ASA, you, it's more, you know, where to aim, uh, for those 12s than aiming at a 12. Yes. For, for me, it is. Yeah. Um, I, I got a buddy Remington who, uh, he can pretty much see everything. It seems like I need his eyes, but <laughs> I wish that was the case, but you know, you just kind of learned where to get comfortable and where to put your pin on the target. Um, yeah. for me, um, and like I said, there's normally some sort of, um, detail, you know, on the target that I can see to give me a better reference of where to aim. Yeah. Now, how does that feel? Remington, of course, that's Remington Boyer you're talking about. He had a yeah. pretty good season this year as well. He did. Known he did. pro rookie of the year, I believe he won. Yes. Um, what's that like uh, for you? I mean, there you were on the classic final stage. We'll just go with that one. There's Jesse Broadwater, Chance Bobuff, Kyle Douglas, Justin Hanna. I mean, those are like four of the known pro heavyweights. And there you are out there shooting right along with them. I mean, you came in tied for second, but what's that like shooting with some of those big names out there? Uh, in, it's, in the game? It, I mean, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I would, I don't really get a, I would have said probably, you know, earlier in the year probably maybe would have intimidated me a little bit, but. Um, at this point, you know, I shoot with those guys on the ranges the whole year. Yeah. Um, you know, you got to believe in what you can do, but it, it's, it's a really great experience, you know, n you know, being there with guys who have been as successful as they are for as long as they have. Um, and, and Justin's not very old, but obviously yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's younger than me. I think he's only 24, 25. Um, is that old but, is? you know, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think he's only, I want to say he's like 24, 25. Okay. I'm, I'm like the old guy out there, I feel like, you know. <laughs> I just started this, I started this a little later. Um, that was the first shoot off I think I've been in where I wasn't the oldest guy out there. <laughs> so, That's crazy. But, yeah, it's it's a great experience. And them guys are so welcoming and so supportive. You know, archery is, you know, is one of the greatest sports. I mean, you just, you know, the professionals are, are so awesome. And, uh, you know, they make you, they make you feel right at home. Yeah. Yeah. At what point? So you mentioned the classic last year was your first, uh, pro shoot down. This is your second, this was your second season as a pro, correct? In ASA. Yes. Okay. Yep. At what point did you, you said after that shoot down last year, you're like, okay, I need to work on my mental game. Did you come into this season? Uh, like, okay, I'm ready let's go for it. Or how did the season start for you mentally with your, uh, what you worked on? Mentally was, uh, you know, I just try to, I guess, I think mentally I thought I was a little more ready than I was when I got into, uh, the Rushmore rumble. Um, cause I got there and I'm telling you what I shot, I shot really good there, yeah. especially on, on day one, but man, it was some of the hardest arrows I shot all year. Um, you know, cause we got, you know, getting right back into indoors after only four ASAs is what we had, you know, the year before. Right. And that was my first professional, um, indoor event. And, okay. um, yeah, it, uh, I think as the tournament went on though, it's kind of like my season as I get stronger throughout the season. Um, the more I I'm under that pressure and I feel those nerves, you know, the easier for me it gets to push through them. You know, I, I'm never not nervous, but I, I just learned how to shoot my bow. Um, is the way it needs to be shot under that type of pressure, just the more I'm under it. Yeah, gotcha. Um, then, I mean, again, coming into this uh, shoot down, um, you shot 214, at least two. Yeah. yeah. 214. I shot two 14s and a 12. Including that inside out 48 yard, the longest target on the deer. I mean, that was a perfect donut. <laughs> yeah, that one, you know, and you know what's crazy is I could actually see pretty much exactly where that ring was, and my my pin broke very good. Um, okay. I was holding really steady. I think 
one of the things that has uh, progressed most for me um, in pressure situations is, you know, I've been able to hold my bow a little more still. Um, I've learned how to set it up, I guess, that way. Um, whereas, in the, you know, when I first started getting under high pressure situations, my bow would move a little, little too much. Um, gotcha. And make it make it kind of hard out there. You know, you can't. My mind settles down. My pen settles down. Right. Um, I, I don't like to see a lot of movement. I'm a pretty steady holder overall. Um, so I, I I just worked on setup a little bit, and you know, I add more weight to the bow. I run quite a bit of weight on a bow. What what's your weight setup? Um, I run a 30 inch front bar with 24 ounces on the front, and then I run a 10 inch back bar with 21. Oh wow. Yeah, that is a lot of weight. And what uh, type of release do you shoot? Hinge? I shoot dummy. true ball HVC. Yeah, hinge. Okay, gotcha. Um, so uh, does that affect you at all when you get in the pressure situations? You know, you hear some of the hinge shooters talk about when they get in those pressure, their hand kind of locks up. Any experience with that, or are you able to flow um, through it? So what's what's funny and something I was able to actually work through this year and I think really helped me under pressure is my hand wouldn't lock up, but I'm not – a lot of guys can pull really hard under pressure, um, whereas I've had trouble with that in the past. Um, I've had to be I – can, I can relax, but I yeah. can't pull hard. Gotcha. Um, and I've created a little more of a uh, aggressive shot throughout this year, and in the pressure situations I was able to execute stronger shots – and I, I really think that that attributed to some of my success this year. Yeah, nice. Um, and that's just a time thing, I think, more than anything else and working on it um, and, and just getting used to being in those situations. Now, how about that last arrow of the classic? All you had to do was hit foam to win the tournament, and it, it sure looked like the release went off a little fast. It did go off fast. I shot a really strong shot on that one. Um, I was shooting at the 14. Um, I don't, I know a lot of guys don't, but I looked over at my buddy Hunter in the stands and he told me to go for it. So I was like, eh, I got, you know, we got a range finder out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not going to miss the target. Um, I shouldn't anyways, I right, shouldn't right. say that knock on wood, but, uh, yeah, it, it went off a little quick. Um, I just got a little too aggressive on it. You know, I, I wanted a quick shot. That was actually one of my game plans going into the shoot down. Um, I shoot best and most, you know, and seem to be most accurate when I'm shooting a faster shot. Gotcha. Um, and I, my first ASA um, shoot down, you know, my shots took way too long. Um, and I just kind of, I feel like I got, they took too long and I'd get weak in the back end of them. You know, I can make a quick, strong shot and that tends to be my best shot. Uh -huh. um, so it was a game plan to shoot quicker throughout that um, those five, six targets. Um, but yeah, that last one, that was a little too quick. <laughs> What's that like? You're standing there, you're in the arena. It's the ASA classic. You know, all you have to do is hit foam to get your first win as a pro. What's it like standing there in that moment, taking that shot? Uh, it is actually a lot harder than it sounds like, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it doesn't sound hard, but you know, when you just have to hit foam, it's almost like, more pressure because you know you like well i'm gonna look like an idiot if i don't uh, hit the target you know or so you, you kind of i guess i kind of thought that way a little bit you know and that's basically i wanted to get a, the pin close to where it was gonna go and execute my shot get it off there and take no chances were so. you able to push those thoughts out or were those thoughts coming in like holy cow i'm about to do this um i was able to to push them out for the most part. Um, I mean, I can't say that I didn't think about messing up. I don't know if, I, if truthfully, I mean, I, I'm up there and I'm just like, you know, you're going to look, <laughs> it's not going to look good if you, <laughs> if you mess this up on your last arrow. And I mean, there's a decent amount of money on the line, um, on that one arrow too. So that comes into play, but you know, I, I don't think about the money a lot when right, I do right. this, it's, you know, I, I, I love to compete and you know, that's the biggest reason why I got into shooting target archery oh yeah i mean i gotta think at that moment you're thinking about the win not the not the money not the paycheck or anything it's yeah like, hey this yeah. is the classic <laughs> yeah that was big for me you know the classic you know holds a lot of weight um it's a you know it's a tournament i think every guy wants to win out there who's competing um and that you know for that to be my first win it meant a lot yeah yeah so in the off season last year what what was it that you did to work on 
getting ready for this season with everything, with indoor, with ASA? Were, were there certain things that you worked on in, in the off season last year? Um, so what I what I do a lot in the off season is I try to I try to put a lot of emphasis on you know working you know working specifically on stuff at the range, not just flinging arrows at paper. Yeah. Um, you know, building up a mental game is is simple in ways that it's just create a friendly competition with a guy you shoot with in the range. Um, you know, put something on the line on a on a Vegas game or on an arrow or play for stabilizer weights, quarters. Um, I don't do the whole quarter thing a lot, but you know, if I can get in there as much as possible and shoot against um a good shooter or even a guy who just wants to have fun and you know shoot some arrows, because you know, I always yeah. want to win. Um you know, so that puts a little pressure on you. And that's what I've done kind of since I've started this whole archery journey. Yeah. It's just at every turn, I've tried to put as much pressure on, you know, any arrow that I can. Um, because you, you need it. It all, when, once you get out there on the big stage and, you know, you're shooting against some of your idols and, you know, these, you know, these professional archers that are just, you know, amazing at what they do. Yeah. You know, every little bit counts, you know, every little bit counts in preparation. Um, but you know, just getting ready for the season, you know, I shoot a lot of in- indoors. Um, I feel like, you know, that's one of my strongest, um, aspects about my shooting is I'm a v- fairly good indoor shooter. Yeah. So how do, I mean, for, you said five years, this is your fifth year, uh, shooting competitive. Mm-hmm. Are you on track with your goals or have, did what you accomplished this year even exceed your expectations? Um, I would say, I don't like to say exceed, but I'm happy with where I'm, where I, where I've gotten to in the amount of time I have, you know, this is a sport, you know, it seems like, you know, it takes time. And that's why I tell a lot of guys who are just getting into archery or younger guys, like, you know, be patient. Um, it, it, it takes time, um, and it takes a lot of work. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at and I really feel like I can build off this year and I'd like to start off right where I ended, um, to start indoor season. And I'm, I'm really excited about indoor season this year. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm feel like I'm shooting as good as ever. I feel like my mental game is, you know, as strong as it's been. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm happy with, with where I'm at. Um, I don't know if you can ever fully meet your expectations as a competitor, right? but I don't know if I um, mentioned it, but this was your first Vegas shoot this year. Is that yep, correct? It was. And you shot at 899. I mean, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> yeah, we, we started off really good on day one. With the, I think I had 29, 300 on day one. Um, right. And then we made I made the daily um, 300 shoot off a um, runner up on that against um, Stephen Marsh. Oh, okay. Um, and then day two, I just had an arrow I should have let down. Is that right? You know, that was a lot of nerves there. Um, being top, you know, top bell with, I think it was Kyle Douglas, you know, Chris Perkins and, oh no, you know, on um, day two of my first Vegas and yeah, you know that, and maybe that had a little bit to do with it, but you know, I just had an arrow I should have let down. I'm um, saying with indoor nationals this year, I had, you know, I had two arrows this year that really killed me that, you know, just shots took too long and should have let down and that's kind of where I was talking about, you know, in the, in the shoot down, making quicker shots. Right. Um, I tend to have a, you know, some guys shoot very well being patient yeah. and have a longer process. You know, I, I tend to have a cleaner process when it's quicker. When you take a long time, what happens? Do you usually shoot low? Um, not necessarily. My no. misses, my misses are high. Oh, um, okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, I miss, I mean, I miss low occasionally too. That's not the only miss i have um but when i when i take too long i feel like i i stress the shot more um Uh, whether it be the front hand or backhand um and and typically you know fatigue can come into play but it's more stressing the shot more because it's past my timing of when i know that arrow should have left the bow yeah 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 um so it's just you got to be disciplined and let those arrows down and you know try not to get in a habit of taking shots that are outside of your shot timing that you know you're supposed to have right well, um, I did want to mention, I know this year that I saw a picture of you also shooting an IBO, one of the yes. triple crown. <laughs> so yep. known pro guy shooting IBO. How, how was that? Oh, that was a blast. Um, yeah, 
and I may even go to a couple here um, this next season. I, I had a great time there. I've always been a pretty good di- distance judger, and I actually okay. really enjoy the unknown um, 3D um, game. Um, there's there's a little more to it. Um, you know, you get to play a little more of a game. But, yeah, that was – you know, I got put in a group on day one um, with Dan McCarthy and Levi Morgan. Yeah. And Joby <laughs> Shaw. And I was like – I pulled up to the first target, and I'm like, don't miss the target. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up shooting a 11 nice. on my first three of the day on day one. Okay. So I, I had a, actually a really solid first day at the IBO that set day two. My judging was terrible. Okay. Um, but it's, it's not something I practice to be honest with you. I was going to say n- no danger of you switching next year. No, no, I'm not going to switch. Not an ASA. It so, ain't right. You know, I may go to a couple IBOs because I, I just do enjoy shooting um, unknown occasionally. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we have a shoot here at home um, that's called the Noble. And uh, it's Noble. They set a crazy hard course with small targets. And they have a known class. For the last two years, I've shot the unknown class for, you know, a little more fun. Right. And uh, it, I just have a good time doing it. So. Yeah, how um how the ASA in Kansas? I don't know anything about it. There is is there a big presence of ASA there? There's a presence. I wouldn't say it's big. Um, a lot of our, you know, our, a lot of our clubs have Reinhardt's. Okay. Um, there's only a few that have you know McKenzie's. Yeah. So staying fly. <laughs> um, drive me nuts. Um, you know that we so most of them have you know. You guys, most people in archery call them elevens. Here we call them tw- right. center twelves. Oh, okay. So, um, but yeah, so we don't have. You know, I, I don't shoot a lot of local ASAs at this point. My tournament schedule is pretty busy. Sure. Um, I do enjoy going to them once in a while and get to see some local friends and stuff like that, and guys who um, I started out shooting with. Yeah. So, like what I was. What I was I was asking that was to see how do you how did you get into the ASA stream like starting to going to the national ASAs how do you get um, there from Kansas from Goddard where uh, you live in Kansas uh, we like I said we do have local ASA here um, and I I just started going I went to what was it I think I went to a couple so my first year of competing um, I went to a couple of local ASAs Okay. and then I had started to learn and hear about, you know, bigger tournaments, bigger ASA tournaments. And I, that first year I started um, winning some of the local ASAs and I was like, you know what? I want to go see if I can compete, you know, at the big ones. Ah, okay. And uh, so I shot two pro-ams my first year. Um, this would have been back in, what was it? 2018 i think what class uh k45 okay um my first one you know, i kind of got a, a reality check at um <laughs> i wasn't quite as good as i thought i was um i had some target panic issues which we haven't talked about that but that's a, a big reason why i started target archery as well um oh, was okay. the fixed target panic but uh i had a few of those issues and then i went to so my first ever ASA was Metropolis. And then I went to Coleman, um, which was the next one, I think that year. Yeah. Um, I ended up taking fourth at that oh, shoot. Okay. Um, so that one went pretty well for me. Yeah. Um, after that, I, I decided, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm starting at, you know, in this, uh, at a little older age, um, if I really want to make it to the pro level, um, I'm going to, Probably I wanted to speed things up a little bit and I felt like I could compete at K50. So I moved to K50, um, my next year and then was able to win out of that. I I told myself though, I wasn't, I was never going to, I wasn't personally going to jump into pro. I wanted to win out. Right. Um, and I, I just squeaked out of there, but I got out. (laughs) Now I have to back up a second because I think I heard you say you got into target archery to cure target panic. Yeah. Explain that rationale to me. (laughs) Okay. So, you know, as a hunter, I I struggled with target panic most of my life. Um, And I just wanted to be a better hunter. And and, and so I didn't get into target archery necessarily to fix target panic. It was just a way to get me to shoot my bow more Uh, um, and to work on target panic. 
Gotcha. Um, and I probably had it about as bad as you can have it. I mean, really? it was, oh yeah, it was, it was very bad. You know, I've came a long way in that aspect. It took a lot of work. That's amazing. It's I, for people out there who haven't dealt with it. It can be absolutely crippling. I didn't even want to shoot my bow. That's how bad I had it. It was just like, I, I, I don't know if I was afraid of the thing or what it was, but it's, yeah, there's it, different degrees of it, obviously, but yeah, you can get it I, bad. I've got kind of a funny story with target panic. So I was, it was hunting season here. It's got to be nine, maybe nine, 10 years ago. And I was in my tree stand. It was early in the, in the morning. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to practice aiming with my finger on the trigger of my release at a leaf. And I'm thinking, if surely I won't shoot the leaf, you know, with a brand new broadhead. <laughs> and I could not shoot the arrow. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's that's how bad it was. And a few of my friends have heard that story. They get a kick out of it. If you drew back, yeah. the arrow was going. It pretty much. If my <laughs> finger came close to that trigger on that old index release, it was it was gone. <laughs> so, so now, do you hunt still with an index, or do you hunt with a hinge? Uh, I'll be hunting with the index this year. Um, okay. I normally hunt. I bounce back and forth. I'm bad about that. I'll go between a thumb trigger to you know index to a hinge. Um, I guess it just depends on what feels best. Um, I've lost a couple releases in the woods with handheld, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to strapping one to my wrist, yeah. um, which obviously you can get a hinge that does that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I shoot an index finger release very well. Right. Um, and you know, I, I shoot it with back tension. Okay. Um, gotcha. and right now that's what's shooting best with my hunting bow. So that's what we're going to roll with. I, the thought of hunting with a hinge just scares me. I, I just feel like I would get in a situation where I wouldn't know where the pressure was or something, or if I had to let down and I, man, it's just, cause I, that's all I shoot for target is hinge. But boy, yeah. when it comes to hunting, that, that scares me. I know a lot of guys who do it, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I know I got several friends that, you know, they hunt with a hinge and they, they do well with it. Um, I've only hunted one season where I hunted part of the season with a hinge. Um, it, it's, it's a little, it's different. Um, cause I feel like you get so hyper-focused on, uh, the situation with the deer or whatever you're hunting that I, I, I don't like, I'm pretty comfortable with the hinge at this point, but I, yeah. I don't know. It's just weird to me. I've hunted with an index finger release pretty much my whole life. So, yeah. you and um, both. <laughs> and, and, and that, you know, I've got, the whole target panic thing pretty well, you know, figure it's never completely gone. Right. But you know, it, and, and I honestly, you know, a lot of guys hunt with the hinge, um, you know, basically you have to be patient. And if the, you know, if you can't get it, you know, a lot of guys say, if you can't get the shot off with a hinge, then you probably shouldn't take it. Yeah. And, you know, and that, and that may be the case sometimes. Yeah. Um, I did want to touch on one thing. The, um, the pro perfecta at ASA classic. <laughs> so that's this feature that Mike Tyrell added for ASAs where folks in the audience, you know, they get to pick uh, who they think is going to win each one of the divisions. And for known pro, nobody picked Jeff Rainey. I mean, I don't know if I would have picked me with all those guys out there. <laughs> it was a, it was a loaded field, you know, and, <laughs> You know, them guys have been around a while, and a lot of people know who they are. I mean, I, they're all very good, obviously. And he said that, uh, Mike said then, since nobody picked you, he was going to give you the target. Did he do it? He did. He yeah, did. He did. <laughs> he got the target gift card, so. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm kind of glad no one picked me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, you had mentioned, uh, that you love to compete. Yep. Does that. And so you got into archery for that. Does that come from, did you play sports growing up? Is yeah, that I played from? football growing up. Okay. Gotcha. Unfortunately, I just didn't have the athleticism to take it anywhere. So luckily an archery doesn't require a lot of athleticism. <laughs> so. Was, was there something that you did like after, um, football, but before archery, uh, you know, golf or something. 
No, not, not really. Um, nothing, nothing competing wise. And, you know, I, but I, I've always had, I've always been super competitive and, yeah. you know, had an itch to find something I could compete at. Um, and archery's filled that void for me. So I was going to say that must've been cool then to, to come across archery and to be able to advance as you have. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool to see, you know, how far things have come, um, over the last five or so years. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we're just getting started. Well, that was going to be my next question. I don't know. Are you a person who sets goals like for the year ahead, like specific, here's what I want to accomplish or what's your game Um, plan? So, yes, I, I think you always have to set goals. Um, um, obviously, I think that's what kind of drives you. Um, you know, I would love a shooter of the year title, known pro. You know, a Vegas championship sounds really good as well. Um, but I, I have the goal to win at every tournament I go to. Right. So, you know, those it's a never ending list of goals. Yeah. Um, so I don't I don't look at it as if I I need certain goals because my goals when I show up to tournaments always try to win. Gotcha. Um, but I, I would say, you know, shoot the year and ASA and, and a Vegas championship are probably the two things that would mean the most to me. Right. Well, as an indoor shooter. Yeah. I imagine that's, that's, uh, at the top of your list. What is the, uh, what is your season looking like? Obviously you're going to do ASA. I'm sure you do indoor nationals in Vegas. Is that the bulk of your season or do you have other things that you do? So, um, I'm going to go to Lancaster if that, I, I oh, think right. that's going to happen this year. Okay. Um, if that happens, I'll be in Lancaster. That'll be my first Lancaster classic. Cool. Um, you know, obviously Vegas indoor nationals, um, all six ASAs, um, Reading. Oh, Reading. Um, okay. I, I want to go there. That'll be my first trip there. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, I would like to make a couple IBOs if I can fit them into my schedule. Right. Um, I, I probably will. Um, just cause I really enjoyed going out there and shooting with those guys and you know, getting to watch two of the best do, you know, play that game, you know, this year, right. you know, it was fun. I had a great time and they're great guys. So is that, so how about how that works at home with you getting the time away? Obviously it helps that you work, uh, within the family, I'm sure. But what, what does that look like for you to get off? Oh, I don't, also, I'm sure they uh, value having you there to do work. <laughs> yeah, um, we're a small company. Um, uh, you know, I think we, we only have two installers uh, for my father-in-law Spence company. Um, one of them's my best friend who used to compete um, a little bit, um, but just kind of got burnt out with it. Yeah. Um, but he, you know, ha- having him this year, you know, he became an installer for us and that's helped out a lot. You know, my father-in-law is really great about, you know, he knows how much archery means to me and how much these tournaments mean to me. And, right. you know, and so we, we just, we make it work, you know, and I get what I need to get done, um, in order to do this. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't have the normal job where someone has a certain amount of time they can take off a year. Right. You know, I don't have sick days or, you know, I technically I work for myself. Um, so that, that helps too. Um, I don't have to worry about taking vacation days. Now, how about the family, the wife and your parents and everybody, when you are, when you come into the shoot downs are, have they been on site or are they watching at home on TV? What's they're all the, watching what's at home. Like? They're watching at home. Yeah. My wife told me she was pro- said it was probably a good thing. She was watching at home. Uh, <laughs> she got pretty emotional <laughs> I'll um, bet. <laughs> when I won. So she said she was a, she was a mess. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think it's great having on a sportsman channel, you know, I would love to see it grow. And I think that's a good way of getting archery to grow, you know? So I think it's a great deal having it there. Sure. How, how long have you been shooting for PSE? Um, I'm technically, um, I'm not on their staff. Oh, okay. I, I chose I'm to guessing continue. that'll change. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see what happens for the year. Um, I don't, I don't know what I'll be, shooting um going into this next season um but i really i really love the bow and i I didn't make it a huge priority either this year um i wanted to go out there and prove myself um and i I feel like it gave me an extra drive 
Yeah. You know, I, I did not know that. Cause, I, cause thought... I, I don't think, I don't think I had, I don't think I was ever, you know, as comfortable. I, I don't know if comfortable is the word. I had something to go out and prove yeah. um, all year. And, you know, I feel like I did well with that. Um, so I, yeah. I, I doubt I won't be, I'll definitely be with a, a manufacturer. I would imagine um, come into our season starts. So. Well, if they're, I'm sure they all know it anyway, but if they're listening now, Hey, there's a free agent for you right there. <laughs> Jeff Rainey, ASA <laughs> classic champ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, well, cool. Uh, was there anything, Jeff, you wanted to talk about that we didn't touch on? Yet? No, uh, I think I'm good to go. Um, I appreciate all you guys do at Cam. I will tell you guys that. Um, well, that's awesome. I think you guys do a great job, and I appreciate it very much, especially coverage of events and you know getting with me on this podcast. Um, I appreciate it. All right, that's another episode of the Competition Archery Media Podcast. Jeff Rainey, we certainly appreciate you taking time to talk to us today. Thanks, PJ. I had a good time being here talking with you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll look for Jeff to have a big season next year. Folks, the Competition Archery Media Podcast is available on all the platforms where you find your favorite podcasts. Thanks for joining us.